start off with this transparent yellow oxide, but really anything. If you started off with um, your Australian sienna or your quinacridone nickel azrael gold, or what else have I got here? Indian yellow hue. Start off with kind of like a yellow base and you don't need a lot of it. So I often start off here because I like starting warm. So I don't put a lot because I know that that's going to react. Actually, I use the yellow Indian hue. And I'm just going to get some of my white. As you can see, I use a lot of white with that. And you get that real yellowy kind of color, which for me is way, way, way too yellow. I don't use a lot of yellow. So when I'm there, I'll start putting in some other colors to make it more interesting for me. So instantly I'm looking at that thinking it looks too bright. So I'm going to grab something that's a little bit dirtier. I'm grabbing here raw umber yellowish. So I'll put some of that in there and see what that does. Should get me a little bit, a little bit more juice to it, which it does, but it's still really goldy. So this is my absolute winner to make my neutrals go away from being too warm. But while I'm, before I do that, I'm going to put some of that into there so I can create something else with that one. So I often do this when I'm mixing up larger amounts. So that's already got this, the same colors in it. So I know that when I send that somewhere else, it's going to still speak to each other. But in this one, I am going to find. Now, I don't know that you can all get this color, but if you see the color it is, then try and color mix it. Here it's called amethyst. And when you put it into your palette, that's the kind of a color it looks like. I'll just put a bit there so see if you can get it. Um, if you can't get that, anything in this kind of family, um, like the purpley tones, but something just that little bit lighter than, um, than your dark side violet, it's kind of good to get these ones here because they're not going to take the, uh, the light colors and send them dark. So when I put that in, and I'll probably need more than that. Oh, no, I may not. It just instantly takes the warmth out of that and makes it kind of a little bit more neutrally. Now I do need a little bit more, but it's still, if you look at that and then you look at, can you see those colors there? Mm -hmm. And you look at that, that's really yellowy. And then that goes to that nice kind of, it just takes the warmth out of it. So if I was to take this now and put more white into it, then I'm gonna even get even lighter of that version, which will be really, Nice. And I just start playing. So I might put some of this onto my painting and then I'll come back over the top of it. So let me get another brush. If I get a lot more of that out. And then I'm going to go lighter again. on that one. I don't know if you can see the subtleness of that, I need to probably add more white in, but it's just slowly getting less and less warm by adding in that color. And I do that a lot. Um, so once I've got this stage, that now I'm just playing. I'm now creating a neutral palette for myself. So I'll grab other neutrals. I'll grab... Um, you may have noticed that some of my favorite neutrals are kind of these toning grays. And while they call them yellowish, they're all, they're kind of like nice and they're, they're really kind of dull colors and they can take your neutrals to other directions. So, and it's really subtle. Look, it is subtle, but when you've got these on a big painting, they can actually look quite, there can be quite a change between them. So see that there? 
And then I'm going to, I wanted to use one of those for a couple more colors that I'm going to be doing. So I'm just going to keep going on here with more white. As you can see, I use a lot of white. I could see that that that's kind of getting to a place where I, I start getting really excited about that color because I know that on my palette will be it's it's not too warm. It's a be really, really beautiful neutral. So it's taken me that time and now I'm at a color that I've probably put all of these on my painting at this point. And when they're dry, I'll come over the top and some of it will end up being here and it will make the others look even better so now when I'm at this point I can kind of go in a few different directions so I'm I will start experimenting so I have not used this one yet which was way too yellow for me um, so I might pull something else into that instead of pulling that amethyst I might go for more of a, um, a blue. Where's my blue? I know I've got one here. Yeah. I'm just going to pull a little bit of this blue into it. Not much. supposed to be well prepared, Danny. Well, there you go. I was. <laughs> I was there. I want to send this slightly into a... white now it's like a greeny a greeny white which might look really good on some some paintings that aren't necessarily too pink um, and 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 if you go even a little bit more blue it gets this really kind of nice ice blue so I might grab some of that Got a little bit of light blue going on next to me. And then that gets like a really nice kind of icy blue. So I'll just keep going with these because I now I've got, you know, by the end of a paint session, I might have four pots of neutral whites that are all just slightly in this tone. I probably, I unless I was doing maybe something that felt a little bit, more um, beach inspired I might go to these ones in general the ones that I'm working on now will be more around this area because I've got a lot of um, warmer tones pinks burgundies so I'm more likely to go here and then towards the white side of things than I am to go here but I love this kind of tone um, if I was working in this sort of palette that would work really beautifully on there. So that gives you, I hope, an idea of the way that I mix neutrals. Uh, that was Clarissa. Hope that answers you, Clarissa. And the next one was Cindy. And Cindy asked about different color palettes. So Cindy said, I love the simplicity of how you um, how fast you pulled this all together. That's my color mixing, I think. It re reduced some of her anxiety. Um, and she loves the palette, but she's more of a green blue girl and also orange and rust. Um, I know you suggested trying a blue with a transparent oxide. Any suggestions for colors to try? I'd like to hone in on what colors seem to resonate. Well, I do also love the browns and oranges as well and the blues. So when I'm looking at a palette or where I kind of start on, I probably do tend to go more the turquoisey blues. Um, although I do have, I think, you know, I also love the really light blues that you can get with some of the more sky blue colors. Uh, but the, and I'll often mix my pinks and they'll end up more orange. Um, I'll, and I'll put blues into them to send them into almost like a really beautiful brownie tone. So I'm also using kind of probably those yellows in that palette 
Um, I love my umbers, burnt umber, raw umber. Uh, where is that gorgeous brown? I'm not going to be able to walk. Oh, here it is. This is a big favorite of mine and it's transparent and it is so yummy. Transparent umber. It just um, straight out of the tube. It's just beautiful. Yum. All of these, I don't know if you use Matisse, but the Matisse transparents are beautiful. And they're beautiful to mix with and they're beautiful as they go next to each other as well. So these are three of my favorites, transparent umber, um, Australian sienna or sienna and transparent yellow oxide. They're yummy, yummy, yummy together and put something like a, something like that. And it really starts, they really start talking to each other. And then, you know, even your light blues with that. That's a beautiful palette. Um, And, and when you start mixing some of the yellow in with that blue, that starts getting really, really yummy. So that's kind of a real, that would be a very, very comfortable palette for me. Um, but this color, Cobalt Turquoise, you may have seen a painting that I did that had a whole lot of pink flowers on it. And I did one flower in this color and it just popped. It's actually, uh, it may look like that, but it's got a lot more blue in it. And it's just so beautiful next to some of the pinks. I don't know if it'll work with this one and I don't have any other pinks out, but I'll just try it. Start getting some, some of those yummy kind of purpley tones. And they work beautifully together. So there's some things that you can start playing around with. And I will start bringing in some examples that are in different color tones so that I'm not painting with pink all the time. But that, I hope, kind of helps you. Um, I also wanted to demonstrate one other thing that I suggested to someone in one of the comments, or it might have actually been on the um, hotspot call. I'm going to take two colors, and this is where magic happens, violet, brilliant violet and cadmium yellow. And if you put some of that, and I probably didn't need as much of that because I need too much of this. I don't know, I might just get some, rid of some of that. I'm going to put this in there. This is what I'm saying about experimenting because you just never know when magic colors can be made. Just yummy, yummy, yummy. Kind of. It's a neutral color, but it's such a beautiful, it really works in my kind of palettes. It's kind of like a, kind of an ugly color, but it's, it's lights me up. <laughs> the weirdest colors light me up. Let me try and find something I can scrape with so you can get a sense. Get some of those colors together. That's fun. Even that with that palette would be nice. Yum. Maybe not so much there, but look at those ones together. Beautiful. So that was like, that was such a weird color combination, but anything purple and yellow, and you're going to get some of those yummy neutrals. So that's another thing to experiment with, because if you put white into that, then you're going to be getting a whole different range of these ones. So there you go. That's some basic color mixing that I hope has helped you sort of start your own thoughts about 
um, where you want to go with your color mixing. So here I am just kind of like trying to make this not into a palette anymore. So I'm spreading the underneath colors. Um, but I've got all those beautiful neutrals that I showed you how to mix and some of my favorite colors in this. So I'm using those beautiful yellow tones um, as a background here to blend some of the underlying um, colors. And I've covered over the pink that I wanted to get rid of. I'm putting on some of that beautiful sienna gold giving myself a bit of a background. Because I had a palette here, I really need to kind of give myself a really nice background to then come back onto uh, the painting with. And I'm bringing in some pencil marks just to give myself some, uh, some story to follow. I, I, I'm not really, as always at this beginning stage, and you'll hear me say it again and again and again, I don't have an outcome in mind. I'm having fun with all the palettes that I created for you, all those beautiful light um, icy blues and um, just slightly off whites, um, giving myself a little bit of composition in these early layers. Um, probably, if, if anything, I'm, I, I loosely see a landscape. I see rocks, I see earth, and I'm kind of following the feel of that, uh, putting on some darker rusts, uh, colors that look beautiful over that yellow. Um, I really enjoyed those three colors, four colors up in the corner that I added to the palette in the Q&A. So that was the theme I'm going with on this piece, bringing in a little bit of that beautiful turquoise green, those are deep rust colors, those deep orange colors, uh, and contrasting that with the beautiful opaque and light whites. Bringing in different marks, using palette knives, using anything I have to the side, to be honest, just to create areas of interest. Uh, and blotting out any areas that are too um, wet. This is paper and I didn't prime it, so um, it, it may warp, but eventually it will go straight. I know it will. Um, I just, and if it doesn't um, fall straight once it's dried, then I'll just put it under something so that it will um, eventually go straight for me if I want to do anything else with it. So I'm just going back over between small marks and then paint. following with what I love. So here I am bringing in a bit of contrast with that um, fluoro pink, just wanting to add something, something really poppy because it was quite neutral in the background. I just wanted to give it a lot more life. And um, somehow or other for me, pinks are what I see in nature. I see a lot of pink in the, in the way it ref the sun reflects. So I love that vibrancy that pink brings to anything for me, that, that fluoro pink. It can just add such a lot, um, even to something that I'm looking at that might be a bit more earthy. So there was a lot of marks happening and I'm getting out a different brush, which gives me a lot more of a smooth mark. You can see that light um, yellow pale yellow color is a lot smoother than some of the others and that's all depending on the brush that I use and um, whether it's a hog brush that gives me a nice hard um, edge or whether I bring in something that just smooths the paint. I do cross between different brushes and different tools so I'm getting variation and also you know whatever else I have um, within my reach. So I bring in the cloths and I bring back some of the history. This is actually an ink that I'm putting on top here. I'm, I'm thinking, I loved this turquoise color so much. What about if I add more of it? Like I said to you, I do kind of follow what I love and I expand on it rather than getting rid of things that I don't love at this stage. Um, so I'm trying on that color a little bit more and seeing how I feel about it bringing in some pops of a lighter pink to balance the bright pink. I think the pink and the yellow go really well together. 
and now I'm wanting to come in a little bit deeper and darker um, to bring in a bit more composition. It was um, all in a similar tonal value other than the turquoise, so um, I'm, I'm going a bit um, deeper in the bottom left-hand corner, bringing in that rust color that you can see peeking through um, from the palette before. I'm using those three colors up there in the corner, in that right corner, to inform the whole piece really. And that was just a little bit that I had on the palette that I was demonstrating to you. So inspiration can come from anywhere. Um, and you can create from anything just by playing, by being loose and by not being attached to outcome. I added a little bit of spray to the piece just to spread some of these colors a little bit more so they're not quite so chunky and so marky but I'm feeling like I really need to do something a little bit a bit bolder now so here I come in with the turquoise and I go for it I'm wanting more life to this piece so what would happen if I added more of that color which I love um, and I've got a lot of the neutrally yellow brown so let's bring on something that can really contrast with it um, so here I'm working through those turquoise and light turquoise colors and seeing what they add to the piece and I'm liking it but I feel like it still needs more so I'm loving, loving the contrast I'm loving the colors but feeling like I need to add even more of it. So I'm bringing on a bit more of that turquoise ink in a slightly darker color. Feeling into the composition and what I can add in here that might add even more. So here I've decided, all right, time to get bold. Let's take something that I love, which is the dark turquoise, and let's add in some more bold shapes that are just going to send me somewhere else on this piece. Um, I loved what I had underneath but it was looking very much like a background and I needed to find something else to respond to. So often when I need something to respond to I go pretty bold with these bold shapes. They're, they're a common shape for me, they feel comfortable but they really do send the painting off on a direction that I can, I can work with. I can I can work with this shape and I'm just um, making a few more marks so they don't just sit there on their own that they feel a bit more a part of the whole composition. Now here I am bringing in some pops of pink to add a little bit more life. Is this enough? Okay I'm going hard with them. Let's see what they do. I know I need to add more life to that right hand side and balance it on the left hand side and I'm keeping the composition going from the bottom left up into the right. Um, still knowing that I'm working compositionally but also needing the painting to sing a bit louder. Just tiny little marks of blending here so it feels like a whole piece rather than um, a separate composition. So I kind of love that the pink is blending both sides of the painting quite nicely. So this is where I left off and it ended up on the studio floor while I was doing some other recording and I did come back to it with a couple um, more uh, paint strokes which you will see in the final piece here. This is where it stands um, at the moment. And I'm loving the shapes, I'm loving the composition, and I'm loving the fact that I created this just out of the palette. So I help, hope this has helped you um, with this messy middle. Uh, it doesn't always take millions of layers to get somewhere. I quite liked how quickly I got to the stage.